Hello. Well, hi. You can barely get a wave back. How's everybody today? Fantastic. Well, welcome to the 20th, 20th anniversary of a day for women. We are so glad that you're here. On behalf of Mrs. Mayborn and the Mayborn Enterprises family, thank you very much for coming today. My name is Dave Hedge. I am the general manager for the Temple Telegram, Texas Peel Magazine, uh, Central Texas Tickets. Very happy to see you guys here today. Uh, we're excited to really bring this program to you. Uh, our 20th year, we wanted to do something really special, and I think we pulled that off in spades. So when we first started talking about the topic, we said, you know, it's the 20th year, but we want to look forward. We want to talk about community. We want to talk about education. We want to talk about business. We want to talk about work-life balance. We want to talk about all those things that's on everybody's mind. And so we've got an amazing group of women here today to, to talk through those subjects and more from their personal perspective. We're calling those women, women with vision. Women with vision, and I really think after you hear them speak, if you don't know them already, you'll be convinced that we chose very, 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 very well. So uh, one by one, I'm going to introduce them to the stage, if you will welcome them. First up, Ms. Paula Hubbard. She's Chief Human Resources Officer at the McLean Company. All right. Dr. Teresa McNeil. Now stay with me on this title. Executive Vice Chair for Clinical Operations for the Department of Medicine, Baylor Scott and White Hospital. Welcome. And Bryn Myers, City Manager for the City of Temple. Bryn, thank you very much. Next up is Dr. Zoe Grant. She's the Executive Director of Zoe's Wings. She's a member of the Temple City Council, and she's the uh, president of the Temple chapter of the NAACP. Now, doing double duty today is uh, Christine Parks. Christine is the chief of communications and community relations at Temple Independent School District. So she gets the double role. She's going to be the moderator, but she's also going to be a panelist. So thank you very much. One more piece of housekeeping before I turn the stage over to these fine ladies. Uh, the Silver Spurs, they will be uh, roaming the crowd. On your tables are question forms. If you have a question that you want to ask the panel, we're going to allow some time at the end. Just kind of get their attention and they'll funnel the questions to me and then I'll pass them off to uh, Christine. So with that, are you ready? Thank you, and thank you to all of you for being here today, and uh, our goal and hope for today is that you enjoy and uh, get to see a little bit of our conversation, and so it's been a pleasure over the last several weeks and months to get to know these ladies, and uh, truly a privilege to be here with all of you. So as we go through, um, hopefully we'll give you a little bit more insight about each of these uh, amazing women and what they do. So. Um, they are all incredible professionals, and uh, what I'd love for them to do right now is uh, to share a little bit about uh, why they do what they do, and anything else that they would want you guys to know. So we're going to turn it over and start with our city manager, Brynn. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. It's really a pleasure to be a part of this uh, panel of very distinguished women and um, thank you for that question. Uh, I'm really blessed to uh, come from a family who uh, was dedicated to community service and really uh, led by example and showed me what it was like to um, to to make sure that I that I took the time to uh, be part of the community and to make a difference in the community. My dad was um, a member of the city council in the town that I grew up in, just down the road, and. Um, so that really inspired me to want to be um, in public service and um, what I really love about what I get to do as a city manager is I get to help really, I really do truly feel like I get to help people 
in what I do every day. Um, and I love the fact that uh, city government is close to the people. Um, I get to know members of the community. I get to talk with them and help them um, solve issues and problems and collaborate together to uh, make a difference for the community, whether that's uh, something super tangible like building a fire station, you know, to make sure that we have uh, fire and EMS service close by to all, um, or it's uh, things like helping uh, with housing issues or sol solving or helping to solve uh, poverty or homelessness issues. So I really love the opportunity to what I feel like is really make a difference. Absolutely, and um, uh, Ms. Paula, why, why is it that you do what you do? So um, I am a firm believer that we all have our special gifts. And you're especially lucky if you're in a career where you, you can use whatever that gift is that you have. And sometimes we don't even know it, right? Other people see it in us and we don't see it in ourselves. Um, my mother used to tell me uh, when I was younger that I had a nose problem because I was always in everybody else's business. <laughs> and, and I was lucky enough to find out what my calling was early in my, in my lifetime. Uh, between my um, high school and college and graduate studies, I was a telephone operator. And that was back in the day where you had the cord board. So you'd pick up the cord and you'd stick it in the, the, the hole with the light on it and say, Operator 13, how can I help you? Um, and one of my supervisors during, a, um, during one of my reviews said, um, what, are, what are you thinking about? What are you studying in college? And I said, well, I think I'm going to do social work psychology. And she said, I think you've chosen the right field. Because she said, I don't know if you know this or not. But when you go up there and pick your seat, we had these little stools that we sat on in front of the cord board. She said, some of these other operators will kind of buy to sit on the right or the left of you. And I didn't realize it at the time, but when we weren't taking phone calls, we would talk about our lives. So I heard about, you know, the husband who was cheating, the child who was on drugs, the mother-in-law that hated him, I mean, all of this stuff. And what I re realized later in, in life was the reason that she told me that was because I would sit there and I would listen and I would ask a question and maybe give some advice. I was 18 or 19 years old, I didn't really know anything, but, but what I do in the field of human resources is, is listening to what the issues are that people have and then trying to figure out what to do with that. And I think over time I've recognized that I'm pretty good at that. And I've been doing this for over 30 years now, and I still love doing it. I, I love that. And now kind of moving to the opposite side of, of our room over here with, with Zoe. Um, Zoe, you do so many things. And so in thinking about why you do what you do, um, talk kind of from the nonprofit um, uh, background. Why do you do what you do? Okay, thank you. Uh, first, I want to clear up my name is Zoe, uh, because my mommy calls me Zoe. The correct pronunciation is Zoe, which is Zoe's Wings Foundation. Uh, Zoe is Greek for life, and so our slogan is get a lift on life, one house, one family, and one block at a time. And so what we do as a nonprofit is repair homes for those who um, aren't able to get those repairs done. They've eliminated their resources. And um, it can be anywhere from the foundation up to the roof, um, anything in between. It's, we're not there to remodel, uh, but to fix those things that make things healthy and safe. Um, I, I enjoy it. Um, it's just a perfect time to see a smile at the end of the day when you have helped someone. And that's what we do it for. We do it for the smiles. Um, and then, you know, we work with so many other nonprofits within the community, and we're glad that we have those because um, sometimes we can't do everything and so we'll find other resources for them so we'll take all the calls and then direct them where they need to go but most of the work we do ourselves and so it, it's really um, exciting to be able to help people um, i tell you we started in 2019 um, under um, joelle at the time was the community development person and she asked if there was anyone who could do uh, some construction work for some homes that they needed done and um, me being in construction background, I decided to write uh, 
a grant after starting a nonprofit that very same week, actually. Sent it into the city of Temple and we received two grants uh, for that year and then the following year. And uh, we've been receiving grants from them. So it's really exciting to um, have the support of the city um, and just be able to work again with so many other nonprofits within the community. Absolutely. And Teresa, um, uh, in the medical field, what is it? Why do you do what you do? And why do you do it here? Yeah, so thanks for asking and also just honored to be up here with all of you. Um, so I grew up in a very small town, um, Sanger, Texas, and uh, I think growing up in a small community, and I call Central Texas, it kind of feels to me like a big small community. Um, but I would just say in a small town, you learn that there are certain resources that you have and certain ways that certain people can help, and you learn to draw on those resources. And you learn, I think, the biggest uh, lesson of getting along, actually, right? That we're all here, none of us are perfect, but we're all here to get along and offer up what it is we have to give. And so I think watching my, my parents uh, just be involved in the community they were in, they had a small business, but they were very involved in all of the things that happen in a small community, the different clubs, church, et cetera. So I think that was sort of my foundation. Um, as far as healthcare, um, we had very little healthcare presence. And so um, my interest in medicine was um, a little bit more uh, not knowing what I was getting into, maybe. <laughs> um, and, and I love medicine, it's been a, a great career, but um, I really wanted something that was meaningful work and something that um, I hoped to enjoy doing. And I wasn't sure if I could handle all the things that go along with healthcare, because while it's fun to learn all the science, there's a lot of things in healthcare. And uh, worked as a unit clerk and then nurse's aide um, before I got into medical school, just to make sure. And I found there that I loved the healthcare team itself, and I loved uh, interacting with others in order to help patients. And I feel like that's still what I get to do. Uh, uh, one of the things I try to tell myself, my goal is to serve and lead teams uh, to impact others with joy, well-being, and purpose. And I think that applies whether we're talking about healthcare or whether we're talking about our faith-based um, involvement and also our nonprofit involvement that we've talked about. And so I think that's also what's kind of driven me um, to uh, be involved in Tamra Learning Academy, which serves children um, who have special needs. And so I think meaningful work is probably the easiest way to summarize it all. Uh, absolutely, and all of you do and uh, amazing, meaningful work. And uh, from a public education standpoint, why I do what I do is uh, I feel like there is no greater fundamental right um, than a free and public education that's going to prepare our students to be and our children to be the next generation. And so getting to be a part of that and advocate for those who don't have a voice as we move forward and grow them together as a community uh, to uh, be that next generation is why I do what I do. And, um, I, and I think what I love so much about what I do is the connection that it brings us across the community because it is a community's job to raise our children. It, it's not just one person's job or one group's job. And that's what I love about doing that work here in Temple in Central Texas is that connection. And uh, which kind of moves us to our next uh, thing when I start to think about it is what it what excites you the most about Central Texas? And I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch that one to you. So what excites you about Temple the most? Let me tell you, I came from big city, huh? uh, Denver, Colorado, and um, I've been here since 2016. So going from big city to small town um, was different, for sure. <laughs> but I, I, I've grown to love uh, Temple. Temple. Temple's my home to me. Uh, my parents lived here, and that's how I ended up here. Um, but um, just coming to Central Texas, I think there's a lot of resources, again, for um, a lot of uh, needs that are in our communities. And so um, having that available um, is a, a truly uh, tremendous. And I go to, a city council, uh, newly appointed, <laughs> um, I, um, I go to some trainings and I hear so many things that other cities are going through. And Temple's amazing. Temple is amazing. It's got some amazing uh, leaders in, in our government and um, I really think that we are far more advanced than some of the other um, organizations, uh, agencies, government agencies, and uh, Central Texas is great. You know, it's right in the middle. You can go to Austin, or my kids are in uh, Fort Worth, so get on that highway and go straight there. So, uh, love Central Texas. 
Paula, you, you are a newcomer for the most part to Central Texas and the temple. So what excites you the most about this community? Yeah, I, so I've, I've been uh, in this area. I, I moved to, to Belton um, almost eight years ago. And um, I also, like so, uh, came from Houston and before Houston was in Chicago and before Chicago was in St. Louis. So I was used to bigger, uh, bigger cities. Um, and what really struck me, and it hit home for me uh, during COVID, uh, and then again, when we had the ice storm, um, well, it was supposed to be an ice storm. It came from Chicago, it didn't seem like it was, but it was. Um, and, and, and people lost electricity and, and all of that. And what really struck me was how people pulled together to help and support each other. I mean, I heard stories of, um, you know, for, for you know, teammates who lost electricity and they were warming their homes because they didn't want to leave, um, you know, in their fireplace. And, and, and other teammates who, who had wood would, would get on the, the, the treacherous roads and they would take wood to their house so they would have it for their fireplaces. And people who had electricity and could cook a meal would take a, a hot meal to someone who who they thought maybe didn't. And, you know, when you come from Chicago and you barely talk to your neighbors, and then you come to, you know, to Temple or, or the Belton area where people will drive across town to help you, it was quite incredible uh, to me. And, um, and I see that, I see that in this community. And people here think it's normal, and I can tell you it's not. Right, I mean, the way that, that, that I see this community taking care of and caring about each other is not something that just automatically happens in one community, so I love that. And one of the things that we uh, got to visit about was um, just kind of that synergy that happens when all the different groups are working together and when you feel like everyone is there and that synergy that develops, um, it is something unique and something that we often uh, take for granted if we've been here for a very long time. So it's always so great to, to be reminded of that. And we purposely didn't let Bren answer this question because we would be here for, for forever when we talk about what excites her about Temple because um, I, I don't know, there's some things that excite her that just baffle me, but they're exciting to her. So what we want her though, um, and where we really want her to go next with us is to kind of talk about what are some of those critical needs that we see coming up for our area? Because as wonderful as it is, and we all feel so blessed to live in Central Texas, we also know that there are critical needs and that's part of what we do well as a community is we um, recognize those needs, we have those discussions so that it's not something that we're playing catch up with on the other end. And so uh, talking about that vision, uh, what are some of the things that we're working on right now for city council and, and preparing? So uh, I think that if, if you've uh, been paying attention at all, which I think everyone in this room has, uh, you know that Temple in our area is really experiencing quite a bit of growth um, at, at the moment. And really when you look back on uh, the historical data, you know, if you, if you look back a decade or, or 15 or 20 years, Temple and, and Belton area have always been um, a growing community, which is good. Uh, but typically you would see a two or three percent growth curve um, each year, which uh, in a lot of ways is ideal because while you are experiencing forward growth and having uh, more resources coming to your community, it's not at such a pace that it's difficult to keep up with in terms of infrastructure and, and schools and all of the things that are needed to support when your community is growing. It's incredible to me to know that uh, the city of Temple is the 20th fastest growing city in the United States of America this year, which is just a, an amazing statistic. Uh, it's just hard to think about that and wrap your mind around the fact that now, at this point, uh, we are not that kind of sleepy town that's growing just a little bit by a little bit every year. And so with that, I think, comes a lot of um, opportunities and it also comes with a lot of challenges that we all, between our nonprofits and our medical, uh, our medical community, our business community, and then uh, the city and, and the school systems will um, really need to work closely together to make sure that we keep that, um, what makes Temple and Belton and our communities special, that, that small town, that small, that, that, that community feel while we are responding to and, and keeping up with growth. And I think another thing that's really unique um, and exciting about uh, 
Temple Belton area is that we're both a historic community. So, you know, we were founded in the 1800s. We've got some really old infrastructure in place. Uh, you know, some places we've got water lines or sewer lines that are 100 years old. Um, and so making sure that we're continuing to reinvest in those older neighborhoods and keeping up with that infrastructure so those neighborhoods can continue to thrive and redevelop and grow, but also uh, balancing that with the need to add new infrastructure and prepare for new growth in, in other areas um, is a challenge. And so I think that's probably uh, our community's single biggest challenge coming up is just making sure that we continue to uh, be thoughtful and, and proactive as we um, embrace the growth that is coming. Teresa, what do you see in the medical field um, as one of the critical needs that is coming up or that we're facing right now? Yeah, so I think about that on two different levels. One would be at the most basic patient level. Um, Texans and our community have a lot of food insecurity. And I think we have a lot of uh, nonprofits who are serving that population. Uh, but we see that in, in healthcare. We see it in patients we see in the clinic, patients we see in the hospital. Some patients come with lots of family to support them. Some of them are very alone in the world. And um, I think having healthy f options for, for food, and when I uh, you know, go to places like CTLC and I see that we have you know, companies donating like fresh food items, it's really impressive if you've not been there to, to see what happens there. So many fresh food from the meat and the veggies and all that kind of stuff. So that's at the most basic patient level. We can't be healthy doing what we're doing every day if we don't have food that's healthy. Um, I think from the healthcare perspective, as our community grows, it brings a lot more people, which means there's a lot more healthcare need. And I think, you know, the medical center is a little bigger uh, than maybe this size of community would usually house. And so we end up also caring for patients from a lot of geographies and uh, because they're here to see a certain specialist or something. And I love the way our, I think our community and the team in healthcare really embraces those and tries to represent the community well. But part of the challenge is actually having the right people to fill all the different roles that are needed. Healthcare is so much more than a doctor and a nurse. Um, it is just all kinds of people. And I think, you know, right now we have some partnerships with Temple College and others, that, you know, that we're trying to make sure we're training up that next generation to pair them up with the needs for, you know, not just our medical center, but other, um, other medical centers and hospitals around. And one of the things that we too have visited about the last uh, couple of days is uh, how how important it is to connect people to the right resources. And uh, you know, we all represent very different groups in our community, but how um, there are, and you mentioned it, nonprofits that can help with some of those food and security pieces. Is because yes, we see that as a vital need in healthcare, but also we have nonprofits that help to do that. And so, really working together to connect the people with the resources needed. Needed is something that sometimes we have those resources in overabundance here in Temple, which is a wonderful problem to have, uh, but making sure that, that we connect the people that are really in need. And um, thinking in terms of the future and or as we progress and grow, um, uh, in your career, though I'm going to I'm going to toss this to you. What societal or, um, uh, I guess, world issue has impacted you in your career uh, more recently that was maybe unanticipated? I think that um, homelessness is worldwide, of course, but uh, Temple has a large number of homelessness in our community. Uh, whether it's in the school systems, there's kids in the school who are homeless. Um, but then we have um, just those who need the, have those needs, like you mentioned, you know, with CTLC, being able to go there and get those food. So um, just having those uh, organizations available for individuals who are in need. I met two wonderful women in the last couple of weeks. Misty is uh, over the sunrise um, for Feed My Sheep. It's just amazing because that's a, a dynamic um, resource for um, getting counseling you know like everybody who's homeless doesn't have a job i mean some of them have jobs they just can't afford the houses that they're living in and so now they're homeless so it, it's a big thing that we find affordable housing to make sure that everyone 
with Temple being such a great city, we need to make sure everyone has a place to stay. And, and, and we have a plan coming up, I understand, do. from the city of Temple, if you want to share we that. We do. Arbor of Hope is our homeless facility. Now, everyone has questions. How are we going to do this? How are we, gonna, we don't know. We're going to figure it out. Um, that's what we're here for. And so it, it's a great thing that we can be able to house our homeless and, and to take care of them, help them get the needs, uh, the, the medicines, the... Uh, mental checks that they need um, to to be a part of our community because we're all here together it's, it's a great diverse community and to be able to work together as a whole and bring us all together lift everybody up everybody everybody up everybody up that's what we need to do and, and one of, as we were visiting yesterday, one of the um, societal issues that we face in education um, more recently um, uh, that's become a greater issue is the advancement of technology. Um, and whether that's social media, the impact that that has on our kids socially and emotionally, or whether it's AI. And um, a year ago, if I had said chat GPT, nobody in this room would have known what it was, including myself. And yet now, um, with the advancement of artificial intelligence and what that has done, um, uh, we have to really work hard to anticipate for our students and our children to prepare them for what's next, when we have no idea what to anticipate as far as what's next. So really helping to make sure that they um, are learning to, and the skills that we're in, instilling with them, that they're adaptable, that they're risk takers and willing to get out there and and uh, try new things, and um, but that too, that we teach them to be discerning, independent thinkers, so that when the next great thing is out there, uh, they know how to kind of critically look at that and figure out how to use it as a tool that can enhance their lives, as opposed to one that maybe will be a hindrance moving forward. So for us, it's so hard in thinking about even taking a ninth grader who's entering high school and preparing them through some of our different CTE courses and other things uh, to be ready for the workforce in four years, and yet in four years when they get there, that workforce looks so different. So again, just something uh, that's been uh, difficult for us to try to stay on top of as we move forward. And um, you know, you guys are all involved in so many different things outside of just your careers. And uh, it, something I think that we all in this room can, uh, struggle with and can agree is a challenge, whether we work inside the home or outside of the home, or what that looks like is, is that work-life balance. And uh, how do you find it? What, do, what, what does that look like? And uh, you know, we're all at different stages in our lives, and uh, so that looks different. But I think it would be great for everybody to, to share a little bit about how you uh, find that work-life balance. And uh, Paula, we're gonna start with you because you had the best piece of advice I have ever heard in my life that you need to make sure that you share with this group. Yeah, and I also told you I probably wouldn't remember what I said I'll yesterday. remind you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, two things. Uh, it, it is really hard to get away from work, right, today. It's part of the technology thing that you talked about. When I go to bed at night, if I don't do anything else, I remember to take my two phones and put them by my bed. And one of them is my personal phone, and one of them is my work phone. No matter where I go or what I do, even today on that table, I have my work and my personal phone. So it's a little hard to get away from it. But what I, I you know, I, I have two 20-somethings. And so I, I spend a lot of my time talking to young people who are thinking about what to do in their careers. And one of the things that I always tell them is, do what you love. It goes back to what I said earlier. Do what you love, right? Um, and it's usually, what you love is usually what that sweet spot is. It's that gift that you were given. Because if you're doing what you love, even when you can't kind of balance it, it doesn't feel like as much of a sacrifice. The second thing, and I, and I, I won't say that I practice not, but for me, I have learned that in order for me to, to actually take the time that I have to schedule time for myself, right? I'm, I, I, you know, two years ago, I put together, I don't know how many of you have seen the movie The Bucket List, but I put together my bucket list. And one of the things that I really enjoy is cooking. 
I like learning how to cook, I like learning the cooking skills. And so one of the things I started committing to is to cooking classes. So every weekend, every other weekend, for those who know me, know I'm in a cooking class somewhere. And it's, it's a class with 14 or 15 other people where we drink some wine and we talk about nothing and we have some good food. And it's, it's my time to just do nothing but have time for me. And I commit to that. And it is the one set of time that I will not give up. We were visiting you said that you make an appointment with yourself yeah that on her calendar she blocks out that time for herself and it's an appointment that she does not cancel and that she prioritizes that and she sticks with it and i just thought that that was so profound i and obviously i've heard of it before but i've never heard it said quite that way and um so i just i loved that and i, I thought that that was tremendous um, and Teresa, um, you've got three boys and um, a busy career. How do you how do you balance the work life? Always trying. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we have a 22, um, 17, and almost 11 in a few days here. Um, boys and um, my husband is also a physician, and so uh, it does get busy. And in, in recent years, you can imagine it was very busy. Uh, and, and kind of tough, so I can't say that work-life balance always looks the same from weekend to weekend, month to month, year to year, season of life to season of life. It's looked different, right? And so I think if I think about themes over time, it's been priorities, and so prioritizing those things that are important, which um, we eat breakfast together every morning. It may be really short and simple, but we're all at the table together. And so I think just making some of those things patterns in your life and granted, you know, for the evening meal, you have to grab it, grab it when you can to be together. But I think that's a priority. Um, certainly for us, just uh, worship is a priority. And just, I feel like that, you know, if, if God is at work in you to will and to act according to his purposes, then the other things will fall in line. And so that's something that we've always um, prioritized as a family, which I think helps me to put the other uh, pieces of life uh, together. My husband, uh, we are huge partners, I would say, in the sense that uh, we decided early on we were not gonna keep score on who did what, for whom, when. And, um, and so we kind of just call it a relay, right? So it's just kind of a relay, like whoever sees what needs to be done. And, and granted, that takes, you know, we each have to say, I need this or I need this, um, but that, you know, laundry, dishes, you know, things like that. And, and I think just involving the boys in the things that we do kind of when, when we can. So, uh, you know, if that is involvement at church or, um, you know, different organizations or things, having them be a part of helping to move things places, do whatever, you know, whatever's needed to be done. So I think it's really keeping it top of mind and, and recognizing what's really important in life. And one of the things that we talked about um, yesterday was how, as, as women, um, we are caretakers. And so we're constantly taking care of things at work. We're taking care of our families. We're taking care of all the things. And uh, how sometimes we feel selfish for taking time for ourselves. But how, um, you know, we, we have to do that and have to step back and take that time. Otherwise, we aren't as good in our jobs or in our homes taking care of others. And so, uh, absolutely, I, I think that's so, so important. So how do you find the balance um, in work and uh, uh, city government and all the other things that you're involved in? I have not found the balance. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped a lot of um, boards that I was on, but I still have a few more that I'm on. Um, I also have two for-profit businesses and two, two more non-profit businesses. So I, I haven't found that. And I beat you, I have three phones, Paula. <laughs> so I, I haven't found it. And I would love to sit and talk with you about scheduling. Um, I do have a great um, city manager um, city manager, and uh, city secretary who takes care of the government part of it. So that's great. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning. And I have a 40 year old son and a 39 year old daughter and uh, three grandbabies. They didn't catch on to the name of Glamma. They want to call me Grandma, so I, I'm okay with it. I love it. I love it. So every day I get to talk to my family. And so that's my piece. Um, I also have purchased an air fryer because I can also burn stuff because I forget that it's in there. Even if, even if the timer goes off, I'll still 
it's just an automatic sound. I just don't register it. So um, air fryers are great. Everyone can get one. <laughs> but um, just just trying to balance, and um, I'm learning. So, keep learning. And city manager, just the name in and of itself makes me tired just even thinking about it. So how do you find that balance? Well, I'm lucky right now I have, um, my son is eight and my daughter is six. So I'm right um, in just a really fun time with, with my little kiddo. So, um, and I really love uh, the city as an organization, how we support each other and how we, um, we really, we talk about it as work-life integration, really instead of balance because, um, you know, it is hard to find. It, it depends on that time. You know, sometimes it's, it's heavier at home, you know, if you're dealing with an ailing parent or, you know, something going on with your, in your kid's life, or sometimes it's more heavy at work, you know, I, I think of you during the pandemic, I'm sure, you know, just that, that time uh, was probably more balanced at work than it was at home. And so um, one of the things, one of the stories I love to tell is um, Troy, my son, he, he absolutely thinks he's a city manager. <laughs> And um, that's because we have a, um, we have a uh, take your daughters and sons to work day program. And he, he came a few years ago and our, our um, HR director um, gave all of the little kiddos that came uh, city badges that look just like their parents' badges. It's got their picture on it. It's, uh, it's got the City of Temple logo. Um, he's official. And he's official. And, it, and whatever your parents' title was is the title that went on on that uh, on that badge so he has a badge that says I'm the city manager and he he's he will fight he will fight a kid <laughs> at school who tells him he's not and um, and we just have a lot of enabling department heads who play right along so our director of public works Don Bond will toss him a toss him a, a, a vest a safety vest and say come on this uh, this walk with me and We'll do an inspection of this street together. So, just really kind of embracing the, you know, what what brought me into the into the, the profession and want to serve was seeing my dad serve. So, really, just kind of embracing that uh, that work is a part of our lives and um, and not not um, not trying to isolate the kids from that, but really showing that it's something that that's noble to to be a part of your community and working. Um, and serving together um, and and then the other thing that I think is uh, really important that I think we probably all would agree with is um, you know some people call it the the village or you know just your community um, I've got a couple of my uh, family members my wonderful mother-in-law and my sister-in-law I'm really lucky to have my mother-in-law live right um, the, literally the street over and just the, um, the ability to call her uh, or my sister also lives in town um, and just uh, be able to rely on people. Uh, you don't have to do it all yourself, you know, and, or, you know, or your church community or your coworkers or your friends. And I just think that's important to, to recognize that we all, we're in this together, just like uh, you were talking about in the, in the ice storm, that's really kind of uh, highlighted in a, in a tragic event or a, 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 an emergency event like that, but it's really the everyday. And can I say, I love that term, work-life integration. Charlene, wherever you are, yes. yeah, yes. We, we're going yes. to, we're taking that. It is, it's, it, it's great. And, uh, and you know, that, that village concept, it does take a village. And, you know, just looking, sitting at the sofa, looking at Teresa, who we were raising babies together. And, um, yes, it takes a village. And um, my daughter is here, so I'm not going to say that I ever did a good job with the work-life balance thing, because she will tell you uh, the truth. Uh, however, in a different phase of life, now um, uh, kind of as an empty nester, uh, so now all of a sudden I have some time that I didn't have before and so learning though not to say yes to everything um, and that's what with so so much of what you said yesterday resonated with me do what I love so making sure as I'm uh, participating or, or board service or whatever that is that it's something that I love and I'm passionate about whether it's the Children's Museum or the CAC or Ralph Wilson it has to be something that I'm passionate about and uh, then and that does make it it doesn't make it feel like work and um, and uh, and it just makes it feels like that extension of it so um, again um, uh, all at different phases I don't think any of us would ever say that we have mastered or have gotten to a point where we've mastered that balance but uh, um, uh, just some great ideas and things that I think have been essential that we've all found moving forward um, and uh, I know we have some questions from the audience we have one question. 
We have one question, and if there are more, please hold your hand up. Oh, fantastic. And I will come around again. Anybody else? Question? This is a great question, and uh, the question is, why is it so important that women are in leadership positions, um, including politically and political positions and elected positions? And so I'm going to let Zoe kick us off with that one. Well, being uh, the first African-American woman uh, city council, it's um, it's a big honor, I know them. I'm also part of the NAACP, I'm the president as well. <laughs> um, so it's important because there was a time we couldn't vote. We didn't have a voice. We felt, they told us we didn't have a voice. We had one, but we couldn't use it. And so um, I think it's very important that we um, are getting into the arena of political. I didn't expect to be here, um, but I did see a need. And so I stepped up. Um, one thing we can always say is, somebody needs to do something. Well, you do it. You do it. Um, it's very important as far as women for our young um, adults to see um, somebody in another position, you know, other than you know the housemaker or um, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. But um, to be able to have that voice in the community to say, you know we can do some more, we can do some more. And I know that when I was installed, I had uh, black and brown children there because I wanted them to know that they can do and be anything they want to be. Nobody's stopping you right now. And so a lot of things have to do with education. If we don't teach our children, if we don't show them that they can do better, then we have a problem. And so women, women unite. <laughs> no, but really just do what you love to do. That's what's going to make the decision of you making that political move. And um, something that Bryn touched on a little bit about in terms of her son and being a role model for him just as much as you're a role model for your daughter and um, really um, uh, serving as a role model for the next generation that, that women can do uh, the same things and be in the same positions that men have historically been in and, um, and that it's important to do it because our voices are important and they need to be heard and no one will act, advocate for women like a woman. And so uh, making sure that, uh, that we are doing that justice and um, again, just being a model for the future generation. So that was a great question. Can I just add, and I know you didn't ask me, um, <laughs> but this is a really important topic for me in that, um, you know, working in an organization where the, the higher you get in the organization, the fewer women and minorities there are. Um, it, 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 it just fundamentally, if you want to have a voice in the process, exactly what you said, um, Zoe, if you want to have a voice in the process, five minutes, she said, um, that, um, that, that's going to enact some kind of change, you've gotta be at the table, right? You gotta be at the front of the line, not at the back of the line. And so, you know, for, for us to do the right thing for other women, whether that's from a, from a, a career perspective or health or whatever, We've got to have a voice at the table because otherwise, you know, everybody else, you get what everybody else wants you to have. I love and that's not what you want. Too, so I want to say something too. <laughs> Picking back on what you said, um, and I have a specific example. So uh, I'm the first uh, woman city manager in Temple. And when I was appointed city manager, I'd already um, had both of my, my kiddos. But um, one thing that I realized uh, was that in our, um, in our employee policy manual uh, for uh, maternity uh, leave, which we, we don't get paid maternity leave, but you can use your, your uh, sick leave or your vacation leave that you've accrued. Um, and if you, ha if you didn't have a C-section under our policy, you could use uh, sick leave for two weeks, and then you had to use vacation, even if you had additional sick leave accrued. And going through um, having two little ones, um, and I think anyone who is a mom in this room could tell you that the, the first few months of um, life with a new baby is not a vacation. It is not a vacation. And so the fact that we had a policy 
um, that said that because a doctor would sign off and say you can come back to work medically, so now you can't lose, use sick leave. You have to use your vacation leave if you want to stay um, you know, at home any, any longer with, with your little one. And to me, that was just like, what? So that was one of the first things that give me that policy, I'm going to change that. Um, that when I have that opportunity, and I think it's just um, being able to, to bring a different perspective, bring a different representation, and it didn't benefit me. You know, it, it wasn't, it was something that I, I had already gone through, but it's for that next person who, um, who you know, I, because I know, because it, I have a different perspective, and I, I tell uh, people all the time, like, it's, you know, you hear the figurative, uh, you need to sit at the table, but it's literally, you literally need to sit at the table. So, I'll be quick, I'll be quick. Um, you know, I think in, in healthcare, obviously, uh, women for years have not been as much of a part of that. And so it is about representation. This is kind of in a different role than what you guys are mentioning, but I think in healthcare, as far as women and minorities, Go, uh, we now are the physicians are now 40% female, and it's important to have women involved in the organizational structure, leadership on boards. Um, I've also I've been had the opportunities to be the first in some things that um, I would have never aspired to be. But making yourself available, to, Zoe, to Zoe's point, I think is is important, and it's not just about the young people seeing the things they can become. It's about act actively advocating for the people who are around you in that moment too. Absolutely. And, and it, I hope you will all agree, you guys are amazing and thank you so much for um, the time and the conversation and just being able to get to know you guys over the last uh, several weeks. It's truly been a treat and so um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed being part of our conversation today. And um, we did get two other questions and I will go ahead and if you guys want, if, want to head back to your table, I will um, answer the two questions quickly as we call up our next person. So um, I, the two uh, questions, additional questions that we received that I want to make sure that we answer is one was, how do we find out about all these incredible nonprofits and how do we get involved? Um, is there a list or a resource? Um, so to my knowledge, there is not one collective uh, list anywhere that we have in uh, citywide. It's a great idea. Uh, but what I would encourage you to do, if there's a specific um, uh, need, if it's homelessness, if it's hunger, um, uh, research uh, the different groups that contribute to that in our community and I know that you will find um, several groups that participate in that um, and then the, the other question uh, that we had which I think is an amazing one but we'd need a whole nother uh, luncheon to go through it is uh, what is a, a do-over if you could have one do-over what would it be and so it was an amazing question um, and again that's a whole separate luncheon but the one thing that I will say just in terms of that is uh, I don't know uh, that I would ever uh, even if I could have a do-over because I feel like anything and everything that I do in life is an opportunity to learn and um, it builds you and makes you stronger even if the outcome wasn't what you had hoped or anticipated so in terms of a do-over sure yes are there things that I wish we could go back I could go back and change uh, but again every one of those decisions or actions led to and made me stronger so that's just how I would touch on that one. But we have a great, um, uh, uh, she's not a guest, she's a very familiar face to welcome up to the stage, and uh, that is Celise Thompson, who is a super accomplished businesswoman. Um, uh, she is, and she acts like she's not. This woman, I don't think she sleeps, but she's a super accomplished businesswoman, owner of Precious Memories, uh, but she is also involved in so many different um, uh, uh, nonprofits and uh, communities. So Children's Museum is a board that we have the opportunity to serve on together and um, she is so dedicated to that as well as everything else that she does. So please welcome Celise. Thank you very much and, and a round of applause for our wonderful speakers and panelists. They were great. You know, it made me tired listening to everything they had to say for us. Well, I am representing the Telegram with my pants today. Uh, 20 years, 20 years that we've been doing this luncheon. And uh, we've just celebrated my 20th year of owning Precious Memories, but Melissa Ball that's here started it 42 years ago. So just super proud to be, thank you, yes. 
am very blessed to have grown up on Scott Boulevard. And so to have seen all that has happened in my 60 years of being a part of Temple is very exciting. We are very excited about our next chapter with Precious Memories, and that is that we are moving Yes, we are moving to our downtown location to become part of the downtown developments and things that are happening down there. We're going to have more services in a bigger space. We are adding mailing and shipping, so UPS and post office boxes and things that you might need in the downtown. So we're very excited about that. And again, just look forward to this event every year in the reunion that it brings lots of, lots of people. This is the only time that I see you or that we see you come by. So we hope that you'll visit us downtown in our new location. It is 31 days until we will be operational there, 20 to 18 days until Valentine's Day. So we do like to help remind that those things are happening. So they come up very quickly. Dave uh, mentioned that at 1.15, the Silver Spurs will be performing. And you've had people here since yesterday at 10 o'clock setting up their booths and getting ready for you. So we hope that you won't leave just after the lunch, but that you will make one more round through to visit the booths and all of the things that it represents to have put this together. So we thank the Temple Daily Telegram. We thank you for being here. And how fun are your flowers? So my team had a good time putting the flowers together. And we want everyone at the, at the table to decide whose birthday is next and they get to take the flowers home. Our panelists, you all have a bouquet to take home. And uh, for years, I have wrapped birthday presents in cartoon paper. So when they brought me the, the paper, it was very fun. So when you get them home, just take them out of their little uh, wraps and drop them into a vase. And we look forward to seeing you soon, hopefully in our businesses and over in the booths. Thank you again for being here today.